Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 3D of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 87 and the question is number 6. It reads, a particle is projected with initial speed u at an angle tan inverse a half to an inclined plane. The plane con contains the point of projection and makes an angle tan inverse 3 quarters with the horizontal. Show that the angle at which the particle strikes the plane is tan inverse 2. So, to be honest, this is something we've done plenty of times, so I'm going to fly through it. The diagram in front I've drawn just so you know that it is the same diagram as normal and we just have the xy plane in black, the x prime, y prime plane in green, the angle of inclination, the angle of projection, the gravity vector and our unit vectors. So I don't think I need to do any more detail on that. Not at this stage anyway because we've done it so many times after, we're at the very end of this chapter. So go for the x prime axis, the y prime axis. Alright, so let's plug in what we know. This is going to be u times the cos of alpha, u sine alpha. This is going to be g times the cos of beta, g times the cos, excuse me, the sine of beta. This is t and this is t. The next thing we need to do is put in the velocity vectors. v is equal to u plus a t. So we get u times sine alpha plus g cos beta get u cos alpha plus g sine beta t and we get ut plus a half a t squared for s so we get u times ut plus g over 2 sine beta t squared and we get u times the sine of alpha t plus g over 2 cos beta t squared. Alright, something we've seen plenty of times. So the next thing we need to do is find out the time at which the particle has done its maximum range. So of course the condition for that has never changed and that's s sub y is equal to zero. The distance above the x-axis or x prime axis. So we get u times the sine of alpha times t plus g over 2 times the cosine of beta times t squared plus 0 times t to the naught. Of course, t to the naught is equal to 1, so we have, we don't, we have a 0 coefficient for this, so of course that, that goes away. So instead of solving this quadratic by saying minus b plus or minus the square root of 2a, we're able to just plug out t. It's just the easiest way to solve these types of quadratics. And just one moment there. So, the, oh, for, yeah, by the way, of course, a quadra quadratic is a polynomial of degree 2, where a polynomial has powers, and its highest power is 2 for a quadratic. Alright, so, let's just quickly enough solve this. So, we pull out t, and we get u times the sine of alpha, plus g over 2, times the cosine of beta, times t, is equal to 0. Where two things are multiplied together to get 0, one of them is 0. So we get t, in this case, is equal to 0, and negative 2u sine alpha over g times the cosine of beta is equal to t. And this, of course, as normal, is a positive number because I define g as a, as a negative number. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is plug that number into our velocity vectors. Why, you may ask? Well, we're trying to find the angle at which the particle strikes the plane. So if this is the x prime axis and this is the x axis, if the particle strikes like so, this is the final velocity vector v, where v is equal to v sub x i hat plus v sub y j hat. Then if we resolve this in the unit vectors that I defined at the start, so they go parallel to the y prime, then parallel to the x prime, and direct them like so, we get v sub y and v sub x. If I call the angle at which it hits the axis psi psi, so it's kind of a, a u with a line through it, then we know by just doing a small bit of trigonometry that tan of psi is equal to v sub y over v sub x. So what we need to do is find out the final velocity vector v. And we do that by plugging our answer for t into v sub x 
and a piece of wire. So, if we go back up here, we'll find the following. We'll find that V is equal to V sub X I hat plus V sub Y J hat. So V is equal to U cos alpha plus G sine beta T I hat plus I'm running out of space U sine alpha plus G cos beta T J hat. So we just need to plug in our value for T which was negative 2U times the sine of alpha over G cos beta. Alright, now I'm just going to rub out all this here because it's going to get a bit cramped. So we know that V sub X is equal to then as a result uh, we're going to get the following. We're going to get u times the cosine of alpha minus 2u times g times the sine of alpha times the sine of beta and that will be over g times the cosine of beta and that as a result will be uh, you're going to get v sub x is equal to u cos alpha minus 2u sine alpha tan beta. Remember of course that tan is equal to sine over cos. So just note that. I'm going to rub it out now. Similarly V sub y will be equal to u sine alpha minus g times the cosine of beta times 2u sine alpha over g times the cos of beta. Now if you look here, the g's cancel and so do the cosines. So we're left with u sine alpha minus 2u sine alpha minus u sine alpha. So the question is, is that value for v sub y correct? And the answer is yes. And the reason for that is as follows. If we look at our quadrants, defining plus in these directions here like that. This is plus plus, minus plus, minus minus, plus minus. So, our initial velocity vector was in this quadrant here, and we had plus, plus v sub x, or u sub x plus u sub y. However, of course, if the particle has done this sort of motion, it's coming down, so we expect the velocity vector v will to be like this. So it's going to be plus x negative y, and we get a negative here. So that just tells us that the direction is in, th in this quadrant, and its magnitude is u times the sine of alpha. So, if we go back to our diagram, we had v is equal to v sub x i hat plus v sub y j hat. So we get like that. And just, just to see what, what answers we had, we had this was equal, to, um, it was equal to u cos alpha minus 2u sine alpha tan beta, that's equal to v sub x, and v sub y was equal to u times the sine of alpha. Now why is it not negative u sine alpha? Well the reason is because I've already taken that into account by the direction of my arrow here. You can't have a, a negative length, you can only have a positive length, so it's magnitude. The length of this vector is u sine alpha. So let's get psi, so tan psi is equal to v sub y over v sub x, or their magnitudes we'll say, just so we always using, we're just using positive numbers. And that's equal to u sine alpha over u cos alpha minus 2u sine alpha tan beta. Now the next thing we need to do is go to our question. And in the book we're actually given the values for the uh, angles alpha and the angle beta. In that we're told that tan inverse alpha is a half. So we'll say alpha, we'll just draw the right triangle straight out. Okay, so it's a half. So this using Pythagoras is root 5 and beta we had um, 
we have 3 quarters, so this turns out to be 5. So sine alpha is equal to 1 over root 5, cosine alpha is 2 over root 5, tan beta is equal to 3 quarters. So let's just plug this into what we have. No, oh, I shouldn't push that up there. So we get tan psi is equal to, uh, you get u over root 5 over, and I'm actually going to use a different color there, just for clarity. So this is corresponding to this line here, the red, corresponding to the red. All right, so we have u over root 5, and that's over 2u over root 5 minus 2 times u times 3 over root 5 times 4. That's just plugging in these values for sine and cosine and tan beta in here. And let's just add this fraction here so that will become the following. Alright, so we're going to get this will become 8u minus 6u over 4 root 5. Now is there anything we can cancel? Yes there is. We can cancel u's across and we can cancel the root 5's. And also, we can get rid of these things because they're just in the way clogging up the diagram. Alright, so if you just analyze that a small bit, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the fraction turned upside down. Or turn, you know, turn, use the phrase turn upside down and multiply. Or you could say it's the same as multiplying by the inverse. So we're going to get here, 1, for, that's just 1. So it's just going to be 4 on top over 2 is equal to 2. So tan psi is equal to 2, which is exactly what we're supposed to get. And uh, that is correct. So that was pretty straightforward. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.